variant of the olive phantom. The problem is trying to find the exact dressing and this is the one that I'm going to be tying. It's basically tied much to the temple dog or the style of uh, modern style of tying the large salmon flies and this is a good pattern in Norway and this is what I'm tying it for. Now this is a obviously the, the adapter I've got in here is the HMH tube fly adapter basically for holding tubes now the tube I'm using is a solid, solid tube. There's basically no inner sleeve or anything in it. It's just basically the solid plastic. It's very good for cold water, it doesn't break the same. Now basically I'm going to put it in through the hole, it's quite simple, and tighten up at the bottom. Now this is basically an inch and a half, two inch tube. Thread I'm going to be using just a, just a light olive in a uni eight Now I'm gonna start probably around about where the hackle would be. I'm leaving myself plenty of space at the front and I'm gonna trim the plastic away to suit when I'm finished off the fly. Now I'm putting a layer of thread down. It's never be perfect turns but just close. For the tag I'm using no pole mirage tinsel. And you could use silver, gold whatever you want. In this case I'm going to use the Opal Mirage. And then it's a large one. Much better to use the large covers. A lot better. So you fold it down, tie it in. To make the adapter itself and then come back up. And to protect it I'm going to use some Loctite Super Glue. Uh, this is on the easy brush so it's much easier to sort of apply. And then wind the opal tinsel on top and wind it up. Just forming a nice tag with it. There we go. And tie off. That's my way the waist. And that should protect it. Now for the tail, I'm just gonna use some polar bear and this dyed olive. And this is a chartreuse lime green, just a touch of lime green on it. I'm going to put some lime green on first. Length, basically up to yourself, your short tail or long tail. I'm using this here to help support the wing, so I want it bound about the body length at least. Two or three to catch it in. Get some of the olive on top. Have it slightly longer, shorter, it's up to yourself how you want it to taper. Just slightly longer than I'm going to print. So basically it's just slightly by the ends of the chartreuse. Then I'm going to basically make sure it's tied, tied in. At this point I'm going to taper away the ends so I've got a better shape in the body if I need it. Just come down, nice and tight. On the way back up I'm going to tie a, a medium oval gold tinsel. Now there's our tinsel. I say we'll tighten the way back down. Simple on the side and then just nice and tight all the way down right towards the tail and the tag. Make sure it's all sitting right and you're happy. That's it. Now for the body I'm going to use this is cola gold. You see it there. Uh, it's just basically a dubbing from Loop, and uh, it's got a nice mix of flash, and it's got e the basically that nice kind of yellow olive that I'm looking for. But what I've done here is this is the winging material, so the under fur from the winging material, the under wing of this fly. Now I don't throw it away; I keep it. So what I then do is I take out some of the the dubbing. And then some of the underfur. Let me up. 
Now the under the, the under wing of the fly is Tanuki or Fin Raccoon. So basically what I'm doing then is mixing the dubbing. So I've got the right colour, you see. Just mix it to suit yourself. And then it's very easy to dub. What about flash through it? So you know so you can just put a sort of roll it onto your thread. And then as you wind up you can stretch it out twist and you need to tighten up and then work your way up the body if you haven't got the right colour it's the best way to do it is to get that dubbing mix that you want and you'll find a lot of the furs that you do use or use for these flies is that the, the under fur is actually very good as a dubbing so so mixing it with some the flash really works well See, I'm just stretching it and then twisting it tight and working my way up. And there's going to be a body hackle. Now I'm going to use just a base or not, it's a normal yellow cock hackle in this case. So the saddle hackle would be ideal in the shorter ones. It's going to catch it on the side. I'm going to wax on my thread. Basically fold it. Take away the waist. I turn at the top and then quickly down the body. Come right up against your, your rib. I usually like to do a straight turn at the back, which protects the back of the body. And then work my way up my normal rib turns about say four to five turns or so, should be fine. Draw any fibres going forward, just draw them back and lift your oval tinsel up. I like to put a ninth, ninth degree bend into it. Make sure it's locked in. Make sure there's wax on your thread as well to give you plenty of grip. I'm just going to take away the waist and bear it so it goes down to the thread because this will taper the, the thread of the oval tinsel. So it goes nice and flat and it's tied in. There we are. And trim away, break away the waist body part of the hackle. There you go. Now, what I'm going to do then is get some Velcro and bring out some of the flash into the actual hackle, the body hackle. So just watch your thread and then just rough it up. This will put like an under fur into your hackle fibres. Gives it a lot more body and to me, more fishy looking when it starts to swim. And in the water, it actually to me looks much better. And there we are. Just rolling these fibres towards the back. You can pull them down so that more on the underside of the, of the fly. But just, anyway, just leave them, they'll be fine. And then we start to ready or ready to build up our wing. So what I'll do is I'll just make the camera come out further. Just give you a bit further so you can see. It's better. Now this is your tanuki, and this is dyed a nice or an olive. Uh, it's in the natural colour, so you get a yellow, dyed grey, you get a lovely colour. So I just take off some of this. This is the material I use for the dubbing, blending through it. It's my length now. The wing in this is going to be between 4 and 6 inches. So it's a good size fly. A lot of movement in the fly. And there we are. So what I'm going to do is just taper these cut ends so that they don't show up too well. Because I'm going to tie this wing forward and then draw it back. So basically, your length, you're looking these fibre lengths to come towards towards the end of the tail. Set on top, come in, two or three turns. Now I'm going to make sure there's wax on my thread. And I'm basically going to put in half a dozen and more turns. That will lock it down and then bring the thread turns to the front. And there we are, that, that there will throw back or sit back, cause the hump. 
and put a lot more movement into your fly by doing that. Setting up, the, up a wee bit now, but once we finish, it'll be good. Now I'm going to put a wee bit of flash in the wing. Now there's a few flashes out there you could use. I'm just going to use this Gowler, it's called Gowler Green. You can see that there, but um, basically Gowler Green and Spy Loop. Nice mix, a good blend, it actually suits basically the fly I'm tying. So basically I'm going to take out, I've actually got some on my desk. There we are. So you're looking for a nice mix of the colour gold, pearl, green. A bit of lime, there's a bit of lime green as well in that, so I'm just going to make sure I've got that. And there we are. And what I'm going to do is tie in the length of the wing. At least that anyway. You can always trim it to suit. So I'm going to catch it in, two or three turns, fold it back. Again, come in and tuck, tuck it back. And then holding these fibres. So watch your wing. You can come in with the scissors. And basically cut it in stages so they're different lengths. It'll all come together once you've finished. Then I'm going to put in some goat. This is some goat dyed. What I've done is a fluorescent yellow dye. And I've added a bit of blue into it. This is goat. A nice fine goat. And a lime green or a chartreuse would be ideal. Now you don't need a lot of this. Just a wee drop. It just lightens the colour. just adds a bit more colour. Gonna line up the ends. Come in. You're looking just slightly longer than your under wing. And onto the flash. Just making sure it's on the top. Now holding the wing, I can push these up, making sure that it holds the wing right. Where I want it, I don't want it to come down the sides. And when I'm happy, I can trim away the excess. Protect it. Always best with go, especially if it's a hard hair, it's a solid hair. A wee touch of super glue just on the fibres. Come over with a few turns just to make sure it's secure. There we go. Now, this is where you can mess about. There's a hackle to go in, obviously. And there's not a wing of black goat uh, basically on top. Now I'm going to finish off with the hackle because what happens the hackle tidies things up. Much easier to do it. Now this is a, a dyed black goat. Nice goat. Now length. Obviously longer than the wings always taper now. I'm just going to Basically bring it in, don't want it too long, or too, like a bit of the under fur in this fly, there they go it. So there's your length, towards the back, keep it on top, nice and tight, make sure it's secure, always bring this up nice and tight. At this point you can check to see how the how the hair is sitting. You can always go back if you're not happy. Even moisture in your fingers will give you will draw it in. Give you that taper shape that you're looking for. It looks okay, I'm fine with that. And then we trim away the excess. Now you don't want do you want to spread this out slightly because you've got a hackle in front. So basically you want to make sure that you don't have it too steep. Now I'm just going to put again some super glue on the ends of the goat. And then take the thread. See that wee step, you want to take that out. Take away the excess super glue. That looks okay. Now the front hackle is this nice olive. It's a Chinese cock. A light or a honey olive. 
It's one of the bigger feathers. Many hackles out there you could use. This is just one of the ones I like to use. Tie it in by the tip. Wax on my thread. And break away the tip. Fold the hackle and wind just one turn in front of the other. Be careful when you're coming over the top. Try and come down as straight as you can on the far side. It's easy to see this side. Always draw in the fibres back as you go. And don't be shy with the hackle. This is part of the taper of the fly. These are big flies. A lot of movement in them. You want that nice taper in the fly. Now we'll see how far we can go right down to the, the base of the thread or the tube. And then what I'm going to do is basically secure it at the moment just to see how it's sitting. Now that to me looks okay. Now we tidy up. Just going to trim away the waste. I want to change the colour of the thread. So I'm going to tighten up here, make sure the hackle's tied in. Now we change the uni thread in black. 8 0 again. Take away your roller thread and your waste piece of your black. Nice and tight, make sure the hackle's packed. A bit of moisture on your fingers just to control it a bit. Then I'm going to get some peacock herald, natural peacock herald. Uh, there we go. Now you're looking for some, around about maybe at least four fibres. Obviously you don't want them broken at the ends. Now when you bring them out for the stem, if you bring it around about 90 degrees or so, the tips will line up for you and then tear it off. Now there's an important colour to this fly that you add the peacock. Now all I'm doing here is just running my nail underneath. Just to slightly curve these fibres so I get them to lie with the wing. Now normally these should be less than the, the goat, slightly less, three quarters of the length. And then tie them in. A couple of turns. Then I'm going to wax my thread again and fold these back. Trim away the waste. And jungle coat. I want two nice eyes. Two nice big eyes. Two eyes here. And don't be shy the length of these you want to see them. You tend to suit yourself. Like I mean you can have them short, small eyes, or you can have them really into the wing. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure these are kinda like bleed the really about the body length. So I'm just gonna pull wrap the fibres, nice strong stems on these feathers, so and I'm just gonna tie them both together. Come over. If you can see that, just hold them. I've got the natural curve of the feather going with the wing. So you take a feather from either side of the cape, right and the left side, and you should get that natural shape. Then I'm going to fold back these, tie them in. You can bring the thread from the, the actual tube up. Just tape on the thread turns up, or building a step. Now I always make sure I've plenty of wax on my thread at this point, make sure they're really tight, never going to pull out. You can break these off, keeping the thread tight, come in with a wet finish. Now what I'm going to do here, super glue first, 
Oops, it's just on like on the thread. All the way around. So fly it's nice and solid. Now I'm gonna speed it up slightly so you can see what I'm doing. You come in with the hair dryer. And the hair dryer will give you an idea of the profile and the, the movement of the fly, so you'll see how it actually how it would swim in the water. So but at the same time this will dry the, the super glue, so you'll see that. So what I do is like you can move these fibers just quickly dry the super glue. You can see the movement, this is the type of movement you get in the in, in the water. The back end moves really well. And uh it should dry by now. Now what I'm gonna add is some black. This is just Vineyard's black, uh, if you can see that. Varnish. Get a shake. Now you take the lid off quickly and see in the wee inset, but that's where I, I'd use my needle to get the the varnish. And then it's just touch it all the way around. Just take your time. And then allow that to dry. Which then it shouldn't take too long. An hour or so. And then what I'll show, I'll cut away the, the end of the tube and then melt it, but I'll, I'll come back to this once this is dry. Now my black varnish is dry, I can remove it. There we are, that's from the, the holder. Now the reason the space at the back here is so that I can basically put in a, a sleeve, which is quite easy really. Just I moisten the back. The sleeve is to hold the hook in line with the the tube and it doesn't wrap the wing. Um, just slide it up until you touch the tag or on the tag. It's the plastic sleeve in. Then you loosely I trim this see the shank of the, the double hook or whatever you use at the back, single even. So there you go. And then what I want to do is trim this away. I used to use a Stanley blade. Just trim it away, cut it. If your head's slightly, see your mind there is slightly at the angle, cut it at that angle. I'll show you once I've done it, I'm just going to do it on my desk. About a mile or so from, you see. And then what I do is, just come in with flame and just tidy up the end and blow it's obviously dry or cooled down and there we go now to most people that don't know about tubes but what you do is you thread your nylon through the eye through the hole come out the back and tie on your your single hook or whatever you want to yeah. use here's where this is a double in a large mouth double, which is basically, if you imagine you thread your nylon, tie that on and then pull it pull it into the fly. Now some people will stick this upside down and it's set into the, the dressing like that. Different ways of fishing it, but it's, in, it's really up to yourself. But you can see the style 